going on everybody it's sacred eagle now this video is going to probably get me a little bit passionate and a little bit heated we're going to be talking about carson wentz and nick Foles because listen i know i should be talking eagles and bears i'm saving this video for the eagles and bears for tomorrow and thursday and friday the big time videos that i need to make for them but this video is going to be different this video i want to talk about carson wentz and nick Foles because i hate the carson wentz versus nick Foles controversy that's going on not just with the Eagles fan base, but around the entire NFL. Because people are out there who actually believe that Nick Foles should be the starting quarterback next year for us over Carson Wentz and that we should trade him or even cut the guy because he's been injured or whatever. Listen, Carson Wentz is the real reason why we're on this playoff front. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. You don't even know it, but he is, okay? I'm, I'll get to that. I'll get to explain to that in a second, but let's just talk statistics right now Nick Foles his statistics right now they are not as good as Carson Wentz's okay first and foremost in the first two games Nick Foles was a little bit not not too much of a turnover machine but he turned the ball over a lot we ended up one to one and we lost to the Buccaneers we struggled in the first quarter uh, scoring points and in the Falcons game we struggled doing the same exact thing number two Carson Wentz two games later in the next two games Sure, it went one and one, but his stats were through the roof. He was playing at a great level that we remember seeing him do and play at last season. And now, now I want to talk about this. You guys want to talk about Nick Foles' win loss record over the last couple of uh, over the last season of his of his season as far as him playing? Okay. So if we look at the record right now, we're nine and seven, right? Yeah. Carson got five of those nine wins. Number one. And number two, games against the Panthers, where you had a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter and your defense blew it. Game like the Titans, where you had a 17-point lead and were trailing in the fourth quarter. Carson takes you back, scores the game-tying uh, field goal, gets the ball in overtime, scores the game-leading field goal. And your defense, what do they do? They lay a goose egg. And Corey Davis scores a touchdown pass. His first, what? What was it? His first Complete a touchdown pass ever, and you're trying to put the blame on Carson because what he couldn't score a goddamn touchdown. It's the defense's job to stop the other team from scoring, and didn't do it. Didn't do it. That's not on Carson. He can't control what the defense does. He can only do what he can do on offense. Now, of course, games like the Vikings and a lot of other games where this team struggled in the first half, both Cowboy matches. But oh, speaking of the Cowboys, that second Cowboy game. That second Cowboy game, if the referees give us that fumble, we're scoring a touchdown or field goal to start off the game no matter what. We wouldn't be down 3 to nothing instead to start off that game. That's not on Carson Wentz. That's on the referees probably getting a little extra money from Jerry Jones. He can't control that. That's three games right there that Carson was either A, unable, unable to do anything in order to win the game afterwards because defense blows the lead, defense blows the lead, and then one where the referees screw you over in the first minute of football. So I'm just saying, Carson Wentz, he has not been the issue this year. It's been the entire team as a whole because we've been very inconsistent. We've been hit with the injury bug. We can't be putting so much blame on one person. I get it. Quarterbacks, when they succeed, get the most credit, but when they don't succeed, they take the most blame. And of course, that's what they got to do. That's the leadership role. But guys, after the blowout loss against the Saints, Carson Wentz and the Eagles had to play the New York Giants. And in the third quarter, what were we down? Like 16 to 3, right? Or in the second quarter, late second quarter, down 16, 19 to 3. My bad. Carson Wentz, before that comeback victory against the Giants, said that I don't remember the full quote, it's a freaking paragraph long, but he went on to say that we're not gonna give up just because of what happened out there. It was ugly, it was it was embarrassing and it's frustrating and hey, doesn't matter because we still have everybody in this locker room. We don't quit. And he went on this whole thing where he he spoke like a true leader. This was before you could tell that he had a back injury or anything hurting him before he went out big time with the back injury re-aggravating re re itself against the Cowboys. He spoke as a leader and came back the following week against the New York Giants at home, led the team to victory. And after that, beat the Redskins. Granted, we didn't beat the Cowboys, but that's not really 
all on him. The fourth quarter, he went off and got injured in the process, and we almost won that game. And at the end of the day, Nick Foles, in the last five of six, won three out of the five, right? Carson Wentz won the other two. You're not going to give any credit to Carson for that, are you? You guys are so stupid. If you are anybody out there who believes that Carson Wentz should not be the starting quarterback for our future, you'd rather see Nick Foles. You'd rather see Nick Foles be our quarterback. You are a stupid Eagles fan. I'm just saying. I don't mean to get rude to anybody, but I'm just speaking the truth. Carson's our future. Nick Foles is our present, doing what his job is supposed to be, which is being the backup quarterback. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.